I love to write, and writing is something I do as much for an audience as I do for myself. Right. I, writing is about serving the muse, and the muse will torment you if you don't serve the muse. So pay attention to your muse and, and, uh, and enjoy the communion with, with what the muse is giving you and the conversation that you and fate are having, and, and then get help. Get help. Don't do it by yourself. Welcome back, everyone. I'm excited to bring a guest from a mental health break over here to YouTube on Writing with Authors, Vincent A. Lancy here. I'm excited to reconnect with David. He gave so much passion on a mental health break. I learned he has two books that are coming out soon, so I can't wait to introduce you to them all. He's got some of his earlier works to show you. Maybe that's a good fit for you, but without any waiting, David, thanks so much for taking the time to hop back on. It was really nice of you to have me. Thank you. Oh, I should. I'm looking forward to it. Everyone out there, if you enjoy this show, be sure to tap the subscribe button for future shows because today we're bringing an all-star author on the show live from the Incubator program. You see behind me, we have a lot of great businesses showcased inside here, the cafeteria. Today, David, I want you to hold up some of your earlier works and explain those to our audience to get them ready for the new release. Okay, this is... Create Your All Love Story. This is the first book I published. It's based on the sense of community theory. You know, we talked about that in our last podcast and about how to define love and what the elements are. So I took the elements of and the sub-elements of my definition of love, and I wrote about them in this book. And, uh, and it will help the reader diagnose their relationship, and they'll figure out what what's missing and what needs help, and not that book. Then this book is a more serious book about emotions. Talks how talks about writes about I write about how the brain works and how each emotion works and how emotions come in waves. That's real important because emotions you, you can't stop emotions. So they come. And you can't say don't feel that. That doesn't work. But you can move from one emotion to another emotion to another emotion because that's how it works. And if you fear being stuck, like many people are afraid of being stuck in sadness. Yeah. Well, sadness is boring, and it's the wave of sadness will carry you on. If you try not to feel sadness, you'll just get stuck there. Right. So, so this book talks about how to process anger, all the non-emotions, and uh, how they serve us and how they trap us. And um, and this is called Emotion Rituals, a resource for clients and therapy. I love it. Well, I'm going to have to ask, is these next two books that you're ready to put out into the world, are they on the same topic? Are they continuations? You have to give us a preview. No, they're not on the... They're connected, of course. Uh, how can you get away from emotions and love when you're talking about relationships? Right, right. But um, really, I've always been fascinated with family therapy. I loved family therapy as I was a young graduate student. And um, and family therapy just crashed. Nobody wants to do it anymore. It's just too hard and too complicated. And um, and it's made some messes. Uh, it blamed mothers for schizophrenia, for example. It, uh, it justified battering. If you... Uh, if you it, in the systems theory, if uh, I hit you, you must have done something to deserve it. And, you know, that's just wrong. That's just terrible, wrong, evil. And so um, family therapy sort of got blackballed. And yet it has a lot working outside the identified patient, understanding that everybody is a party to whatever is happening. That's still a very good idea. It's just that uh, Gregory Bateson, who was the originator of the systems theory in uh, the 1930s and 40s, that guy had only one idea about systems, and it was homeostasis, and it was the tit for tat kind of thing. Yes, we do hit back. Yes, we do. Yes, we are a system. Yes, we are. Yes, there's an identified patient who we tend to scapegoat. Yes, those were his ideas, all good ideas. 
but he just had those ideas. And he was looking for how natural laws could apply to relationship. And he only found one, and that was the law of homeostasis, Newton's law of homeostasis. So, um, so I still believed in family therapy, uh, but I thought what was wrong was that there needed to be more laws. There, Love that. There are much more natural laws than just one. So I looked for others, and I found uh, at least 12. There's surely more. And, um, and I augmented his idea about homeostasis, which humans do act that way. When we hit, somebody hits us back. You know, shit, that does right. happen. Uh, but that's just not the only thing that happens. Uh, that, there are lots of, lots of other laws that uh, science gives us that when you use those as a metaphor, they really are helpful. They, they really help us understand what's happening between us and another person. Well, I look forward to this. So I wrote about Gregory Bateson and Margaret Mead and their relationship. And, and then I wrote about um, Lynn Hoffman and her, her description of family therapy. And then I began to write about the laws, the natural laws that would make family therapy and family systems theory work again. And that's the first book. The second book has to do with the natural laws as they apply to relationships, and it's more for the general public. So it has all 12 natural laws. What do you mean by general public? Do you mean people not needing family therapy just to educate them, or what do you mean? I mean uh, I mean couples, just uh, it'd be mostly a couple's relationship. Okay. Um, the, the first book I'm talking about, that book will be, the first book will be called What Happened to Family Therapy? Right like from that. the system theory. And uh, that's the first book. And that's more of a, um, you know, you, it, it, it's more textbooky. It, it's easy access. It's easily read. And for somebody who's interested in how, how these laws are developed and what happened to family therapy, it's a, it's a good read. Um, the other book is anybody can pick it up and okay. understand how to apply these laws right away. It's, it, and that way it's, it, it's forever. Is it a book bundle? Will it be released separately? I don't know. I have to find a publisher. <laughs> Let me so, pub, you know, publishers have to play. They have to be part of the creative process. So, so they'll... Uh, you gave me an idea you know, here. You gave me an idea here, David. Let's talk about your experiences with self-publishing. You're talking about traditional publishing now. What is swaying you for all of our viewers out there who are in these shoes? Do I go traditional? Do I self-publish? Why are you leaning towards traditional publishing? Well, one is because of the validation you get from a publisher who thinks your book is good enough and from their ability to help you promote the book. Right, right. And and if I can crack that ceiling and get into that that world, I'd like to play there. If I can, I'll self-publish it. But for now, um, the books are professionally edited by one of the best editors in the United States. Um, and, um, so I'm, I'm, I got a good product. I got, I got a good products. It's just, um, getting somebody to look at them and say, Oh, we this, this needs to be under our label and we want to publish it. And if that doesn't happen, sure. I'll put it on my website and I'll publish it. I look forward to seeing all of this unravel. You have to keep me in the loop for when the release goes live. We'll have to send everybody to your pages, but David, oh. Yeah. You, you talked about all your books. The one thing I always ask before I sign off in these much quicker interviews than you're accustomed to on a Medsa health break, what is one piece of advice you have for any writer out there, whether they have brain farts, whether they got, they're not seeing the picture through. We know it's not as easy as picking up a pen and writing a whole book and then you're done. What is some advice you can give? Well, um, I love to write and writing is something I do as much for an audience as I do for myself. I, writing is about serving the muse and the muse will torment you if you don't serve the muse so pay attention to your muse and, and, uh, and enjoy the communion with, with what the muse is giving you and the conversation that you and fate are having and, and then get help get help don't do it by yourself get help 
Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing everything you did today and for taking the time to hop back on the podcast. Where can we find out more about these books online when they're live? What is your website for the meantime? My website is uh, drdavidmcmillan.com. And we can find everything for the books once they're live there? Once they're live, yes, you can. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Everyone, be sure to go check out all he does on his website. If you missed his testimonial, his courageous, passionate testimonial, I should say, on a mental health break, no worries. Scroll down in the episode description. You can check that out there. Of course, be able, be sure, Ooh, little word drama there. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for future episodes. I'm at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube. If you have a book and you want to share with the world and inspire our fellow authors and writers out there, please reach out to Danica at podcastsbylancey at gmail.com. The same goes for ghostwriting inquiries. And with that, we are signing off today from the Loth Center. David, thanks again for taking some time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.